Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here, and I'm super excited to see you on a new week, and we've got some great crafting and sewing for you. So welcome, say hi, say where you're from. Uh, we're just gonna give you a little disclosure here. Kathy and I are having a little bit of internet issues, so if we freeze or disappear, just know it's us and not you. So pop in, we've got Kathy Stipe here, and wait to see the fun things she has for you. Kathy, how are you? I'm doing good today. How are you? I know we're both I'm having doing good. Some... I, I kind of gave a disclosure. <laughs> yes. Uh, so maybe we should get so, on with what Kathy, we're doing. I'm going to let you kick it off and I'm going to kind of get in the comments in case anything happens with our internet. All right. Sounds good. So today I'm going to be covering a little bit of about print moda and i only have a couple of cameras set up so just a little disclosure i will try to move my camera but do it slowly so what i wanted to show you was using print moda i embellished just a placemat that was purchased by adding this trim around the outside edge. So I printed off my length of fabric, and this is doubled, created a tube, and probably the hardest part of this project was turning this tube right side out, but I turned the tube right side out, and then I stitched it on the placemat. So my reason for doing this is my sister is hosting Easter and I don't like to ever go without a hostess gift. So I'm giving her the four piece mats that I'm making. I'm also giving her, if you can see this little tiered tray that I've kind of decorated for her. I use the Artspira app and made this cute little cutlery holder. So I'm making one of these for everyone that's going to be there. And I just think it's going to be a fun, a fun day. I also use just regular fabric and use the cutlery holder file from the Artspira projects and just made a little stuffy that I set up here on her tray give you another little preview this was a picture that i oh printed my God. that's so cute kathy i printed this and then this is just one of those little canvas blank canvases and i just decoupaged that on there and it's the perfect size just to sit and decorate the little tray but we'll go a little bit further and I've created this bunny shape. I did that in my design center and I'll show that if time and internet allows. And I did another bunny towel for her as well. Oh, that's so cute. So I'm hoping that she's going to enjoy my little gift. I wanted something that looked springy so that they can leave it out more than just Easter time. And that's why I chose the print that I, I printed off. This was a digital scrapbook paper print file that I purchased. And I was able to bring email that to myself, open it up on my device, save it to the files, and then open it in Artspira so that I could print to my print moda. So there's just so many things that you can do with it. It's just wonderful. So- Kathy, those are so cute. I Somebody here says, I, I bet you're on everybody's guest list. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's usually at our house, so I don't have to make for everybody, but we are doing Easter at my sister's this year, so. There you go. There, These are super cute. We, I cannot wait to see how you did these. Well, one of the things that I wanted to show on the sewing of the that trim piece is using my digital dual feed move it foot. Mm -hmm. 
a stitch in the ditch hope for it because oh. that makes getting consistent seams or stitching on top of that so easy. So I'm going to change to my camera on my machine. And oh, I got you covered until you come back. <laughs> But while she's switching, guys, we are live today. We're having a little technical difficulties, but it looks like we're, fingers crossed, we're doing fine right now. So, all right, Kathy, I got your machine, and um, the comments are rolling in, so I know we're doing good. <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to switch this over here for one second to my machine screen. Go out just a little bit. All right. So here's what I did. I'm using my straight stitch center needle position, stitch 1-03. But because I wanted that to be consistent on all of these that I do and not have to make myself a note to remember it, I went ahead and changed my left right shift, which is basically moving my needle and I changed it to six, and I saved it to the memory of my machine. So now when I pull up that stitch, it basically default to that. So now we're going to slowly make our way back to the needle. Maybe not as slow as I wanted. <laughs> but you can see the flange on this foot. And I'm guiding that right along the edge. I did go ahead and pre-sew the one right side. And now I'm doing the inside. And so that just makes it really easy to go ahead and stitch. And oh I'll my see. gosh, Kathy. That is so simple. I don't know why, but I always forget about that foot. It's more than just stitch in the ditch. That's what I love about it. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and cut my thread because I can go back and finish this. When I'm just trying to rush through a little bit because we've got internet right now. <laughs> Everyone's that grateful for that too. <laughs> so one thing that I wanted to point out is you have the ability to save um, for each stitch five spots on what you like your settings to be, and you can go into the memory. And hey, Kathy, I'm gonna have you go back to your uh, other. Move your camera over to the screen. There we go. <laughs> yes, yeah, so save them to your memory, and then if you want to get one, you just hit retrieve. And there they are. You can see I've actually saved that three times. I don't need to have it in there three times, but it was just what it is, you know. So anyway, you've got five slots for each stitch that you can save a particular setting to. So now we want to go to embroidery because... And I'm not going to stitch out anything, so I'm just going to take the foot off the machine. And in embroidery, what I wanted to show you was I already saved that little cutlery holder, the little bunny, into my machine because my internet was not working earlier. So my devices were not talking to each other. So once I got it to work... I wanted to get it saved into the machine. But now I've got my bunny up there. And the first thing that stitches is the part that um, holds the fabric down for, I think, the pocket. But on the Luminaire, you have a no sew feature. So I don't even have to skip over him. I can just select that color and hit no sew at the bottom. And now I just have that bunny outline. So it's just, just the outline of the bunny. 
So I'm going to put my hoop on because what I would like to do is I have two pieces of fabric that I have printed from Print Moda. And I will show you how to do this in just a second. But do you see this one little spiral right in here? This is in the geometric settings. And I want to try to center that in the bunny's tummy area. So oh, by go That fabric is beautiful. Isn't it pretty? It was oh, just, yeah. I just did an internet search for spring floral watercolors. Wow. And there are thousands of them. I just had to pick the one I like the best. So with that down there, I want to use my projection key to be able to stabilizer so I can get that fabric positioned exactly how I like it. So I'm going to turn on my projection. And now that you've seen the screen, this little projection box right here, I'm going to move it down over where the the bunny's little tummy is at because that's the area that I want to be able to align. So I have that three by five projection area. So now we'll slowly guide you back over here. Maybe oh, we can see that. Great. Well, I turned off my lights on my machine so that it would show up in video. So now when I put my fabric down, I can get it placed precisely where I want it. So do you see how I now have this little design, that little floral spiral right here in the center of the belly? And I can always move this projection box up and see where the rest of it and make sure I have enough fabric in there to cover it. So I do. So now I would be good to, if I'm making one of the little stuffies out of it, I don't care what it is on the back. So I would just put my other piece of fabric face down, let that stitch. And when it stitches or finish stitching, then I turn it right side out. And that's how I made this little plush bunny rabbit. Oh, that's so cute. And it's like I said, it's the same thing, same shape cutlery holder it just doesn't have the pocket in the back and yes when we have big family gatherings we use plastic wear but I try and look a little bit more classy with the silver one so that's adorable so that's how that was created hey Kathy Somebody's yeah. asking where you got the bunny design. The bunny design is in the Art Spira, and it's okay. one of the. So let me get my phone. See if we can get it up here so we can see it. And it went to sleep on me. There we go. How is that coming in? Perfect. Okay, so all I did um, across the top up here, you have different categories and you can go into projects and I can type bunny, I think, or Easter. Yeah, I typed Easter. And there he was, Easter bunny cutlery holder. So it has a little video with directions. It shows you what you need to make it. And then when you get down to where it's sewing, this one right here where it says to tap the pattern below. So if I tap that and say create, and I could add text to it if I wanted to, I could put ether. move that down. You can personalize it any which way you want with the Artspira app. 
And then I could say, okay, they done. And I don't want to save it, but now I can transfer it to my embroidery machine. And when I transfer it to the embroidery machine, it's always going to give you a warning. Do you want to overwrite the data that's floating around? And of course I do. And so now it's transferred to my machine. So right now they're talking to each other. So maybe this would be a good time to show you. Let's go back home. Under my creations, these are some of the things that I've created. This was how I got the, the design for that wrapped canvas. Again, it was another floral um, digital design that I purchased online because the colors went so well with my theme that I was going with. Um, cancel, cancel. And here is the fabric that I created. That's gorgeous. And with that, I'm going to go to new. I'm in the printing category. Can you see that? I'm not looking at my camera or my screen. So. Yeah, we can see it. Okay. So under printing, I went into geometric patterns, and it always defaults to the sublimation printer. But I just chose the letter size and said done. And now I can either go from a pattern that is built into Artsphera or I can bring in my own image. And I have a folder labeled Artsphera. And this was the design that I brought in. So you can do take little pieces of the design when you're doing the geometric because basically that's making a pinwheel out of it. So I just played with them until I found one that I really liked. And you can tell better on one of these that I've already got printed out. See how you can see each little piece of the triangle if you look closely. And you can change the size of it. So this was printed at a bigger scale. But still oh my gosh, that is beautiful. I would use that all day long in so many different things. <laughs> well, the thing about it is, is I find myself sitting here playing more with the app than actually creating at my machine sometimes. So I'm going to say done because I like that one. And now this is where that size comes in. I can change the size of my triangles. And do you see how as I'm changing the size that the fabric background changes? Oh, wow. Isn't that pretty cool? That's awesome. I mean, this is the adult version of a game. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> liked that one and I wanted to print it all I'm going to do is say done and I can save it to the server but I don't want to save it right now this is where my print settings come in so I'm printing to my print mode of printer and in the print settings you have eco mode or you have fine mode I have found that I cannot personally tell the difference between the two. Eco mode, my thing is, is that I'm saving ink. So I'm going to go with that. And I always want to print it borderless. So my settings are now saved. So if I hit print, I'm going to get a message pop up that tells me, make sure I have enough length on my fabric roll for the print that I'm doing. So I only need eight and a half inches. So I said, okay. And down here at the bottom, it says it's sending. And earlier this morning, it didn't want to send, but I can hear my printer printing, but it's still sending. And it doesn't take that long at all for this to work.
So it's at 54%. And so I'll show you that fabric. Just out of the front. But um, I'm just having way too much fun. <laughs> I think everybody watching is having fun because I was, you know, there's so many different things in that app when we were playing with fabric and the spiral, whatever you want to call that thing. I always forget about the changing the size of it. And that opens up like a hundred different, oh, hundreds of different looks. I mean, you could take one picture and have an entire quilt that could cover your entire house. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it's just... It's phenomenal what you can do with it. And if something doesn't suit your liking that's in the app, if you can't find anything in there that you like, um, you can always go on the internet and just look for, I always look for a seamless digital print or seamless digital scrapbook paper. I think that's us usually the terms that I use for search. Good idea. That was how quickly that printed. Isn't wow. that pretty cool? Yeah. That one, maybe I should have saved it. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Not pretty? Print Moda, if you don't know, the Print Moda fabric does have a carrier sheet on the back that you're going to peel off. And I usually will let this ink dry for a bit before I do something with it, but there's my nice cotton fabric for my print. Beautiful. Loader. Absolutely beautiful. So I don't know about other areas of the country, but in this area, something that was very popular, especially for gift giving at Christmas time, were mama applique across the top of it, you know, across the you know, the chest area. And they were taking kids. You would take your child's favorite or your favorite outfit for your baby and use that for the applique fabric. Well, I have a niece that lives a couple hours away that just had her first baby on March 8th. So needless to say, I haven't gotten to see her so I wanted to make her a mom shirt. So I asked her, I says, just take me a close up of one of your favorite outfits for her right now. So she did. I saved the, the file on my device, on my phone, and I brought it into Art Spira and there's her mama shirt. Oh my gosh. That's adorable. I love that. That's one way to um, that you can use it. And I'm glad that I did not use the original outfit because as I was trying to get stabilizer away, I don't know if you can see it, but I poked a hole in the shirt. Oh, no. So, oh, wait, wait, wait. I can see the hole, so now what are you going to do? Well, because I saved the file, all I have to do is print the fabric again and just remake the shirt. Oh, but how, you got to save that shirt. Maybe you could put a bunny over the... <laughs> Go back and embroider little dots or something in between each letter. Yeah. You know, a spacer dot or something. Or she can wear it for a, a yard shirt. I don't know. But... <laughs> the house that's what I I've got more holes in my cleaning the house shirt I guess I'll call it that <laughs> yeah you can have it as a house cleaning shirt I don't know with a new baby if you have time for house cleaning <laughs> oh my gosh I love that everyone saying they love the project they love the fabric yes yes the fabric is so cool and the thing of it is is you don't even have to use the um I guess the fabric choices that they have for the print mode of printer. I even printed a sublimation file. So it's 
So this is one of the ones or one of the printing projects for sublimation. But I was able to print that on the print moda as well. Wow. So my well, next I, you got a ton of ideas. Everyone's saying embroider a flower over it, embroider yes. a bee, you got hearts, uh, add the baby's name, all these different ideas for you. <laughs> well, the baby's name has been on everything since the month before Christmas. I mean, I think <laughs> child's name when she's born because everything had her name on it. So, oh, that's but um, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, this is one of the things I just didn't get around to, but I just cut some shapes that I will sew together four of these to make a little stuffed egg. Oh, that's the reason, cute. The reason, I'll be honest, the reason I did not, go ahead and get these done was because I don't have anything to stuff them with. I used <laughs> for um, Valentine presents for my grandkid. So the next thing on a, since we're rushing is when I created the little bunny towels, you can do that on your luminaire by printing out clip art, attaching it to your scanning frame. And for those that have never seen it before, I can put this on my machine and change my camera back around and show you how it's done. Should I do that since we've got internet right now? Sure, We. I, I think that the brother fans are lucky because the internet's been knock on Wood, the internet's been oh. working great. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to switch my camera back to my machine camera. All right, and while she's switching, if anyone has any questions, drop them below. I think I forgot to mention that we are live streaming on Brother Sews and Brother Crafts so, um, Facebook and YouTube pages. So we can see all your comments in any of those locations. It looks like Kathy is back at her machine. So let's see what's happening. Okay, so just attention to the fact that I did not remove my um, move it foot. I mean, I can, but I don't have to as long as I'm not stitching. It's not advisable, but I'm going to, well, let's see if I can, if I can get it off without too much trouble, I'll take it off. Just that I know it's not going to drag and be in the way when I'm scanning. Okay, so that foot is off. So back to my machine. I'm going to see if I can get this back out here. I have tape marks on my floor. You would never know it. But <laughs> so in my design center, if I want to scan what's on my frame, I'm going to go to this little fern leaf icon that's up here, and I'm going to do a line design and have it scan. And when I do that, it's just going to take a picture of what I have on, and it comes in at actual size. So this one leaping bunny that I did, this one right here, he's going to oh, come yeah. over and I'm going to have to size him down. That's really cute. I think to myself sometimes that, you know, well, they've probably already seen this before, but then I, you know, people get excited because they've just bought a new Luminaire 3 and they've never done this. So I have to stop and remember you know, that we have people that have not seen it before. So now that I've scanned, you can see the image on the screen. And I'm just going to crop out the majority of the background. Crop out my little magnets that I had. And I can tell that there are some light and dark areas. I want the stitch type down here at the bottom 
I know you're probably, it's almost out of the screen, but down at the very bottom, I can choose a different stitch and we'll make it a blue bunny and say, okay, and we'll see how that comes up. Well, that looks to me kind of garbly gook on my screen. So I'm going to change my grayscale detection and hit retry. And when I moved it all the way over to the left, I now have a cleaner picture so I can just set it. And I don't want to see the background image, so I'm going to lighten the background image. And the only thing that I see right now are my stitches. Let's blow it up a little bit so maybe you can see it. You see the bunny? Yeah. And he selected, and I'm going to size him. Right now, he's 5.89 inches tall by six and a quarter inches wide. And I don't need a bunny rabbit that big on a, on a towel. So that looks like a good size to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save him, kind of move him to the middle. I'm going to put him in the memory of the machine. And this is how I made the applique. I went to next and I left that running stitch at default and I set it to stitches. Then I went back to add went into my design center, my design center, I can pull that little bunny out of my pocket because I saved him at the size that I wanted him. And now I'm going to change that line type to the candle wicking stitch. We're going to make them bright pink and touch our flood fill bucket, touch the outline. And now when I go to next, now I get my candle wicking settings. Let's bring that up so you can see it a little bit better. And naturally the glare is right over where he's at. So let's see if I can move him. We can see him really good though. Oh, can you? Okay. So this is where I could go in and I could change my um, the size of my candle wicking stitch. To get it just the size that I want. I love playing with the cat stitch because I can change the spacing in between. And when I do that, Angela, um, well, that was a little bit too much. When I get it just right, and I'll have to just keep playing with it. But I can take and put one of those hot fix crystals, you know, the glue on crystals in between each candle wicking stitch. And that just makes awesome bling on a shirt. Oh, that would be really cute. But I'm not going to put it on a towel that you'd be drying dishes with. So I'm going to take facing back down to the default. And how I can tell it's the default is because it has the black box behind it. So if I say, okay, now it's going to go back down to the default. And then I can set that and say, okay. So now I have two repeats of my bunny. This first one, I'm going to touch the color. And in my color chart, if I assign that cut color, the applique material color to that color stop. Then I can go to memory. Do you, can you see in my screen the little scanning cut that's down here at the bottom? Maybe not. Nope, we can't see that. Okay. No. There we go. Maybe if this doesn't move. Okay. So I have the scan and cut down here at the bottom. So I set my design, my scan and cut wirelessly, my applique cut file, so that I could cut my bunny out on my scan and cut. Let's see if we can 
So here was my printed fabric, and there was the cutout of my bunny that I used on that towel. So I love it. Brother gives us so many. So I can be just as creative as I want to be. So that, that is was so cute, Kathy. Well, that is how I created that bunny. So we'll go back home. And I will pull up my um, Art Spira app because I just have to show you one more thing. And I'm going to go back to the home screen, see if we can get it situated in here. There are different projects that you can search for. Um, these are all the projects that are in the art store. Magazines that come out weekly. The ones with a crown are the ones that are in the paid subscription. The ones that are have no crown on them, those are ones that are free to anyone to use. But I wanted to make this pillow. Let me show it. Oh, that's cute. So my son took his son to an all gold weekend. They went to a hog roast and somehow my grandson ended up with holding the hog head. <laughs> so that was something fun. That's a memory. I think I may give this to him for, um, for his Easter gift because they this all is, get gifts Easter. This is when you hope he's not watching you today. <laughs> or oh, I know. Of the oh, I know he because his Colorado cousins are in town and they were supposed to be having a beach day, except for the high today is only supposed to be 63. So so much <laughs> for beach. maybe it'll be <laughs> something. Well, to add the lettering and everything in um, Art Spira, but I use the Luminaire to do the quilting in these little color spots. So this was a template that you could add your own picture to. So it, I'm just having so much fun. And, and this one down here on the bottom that's cute. Is that couching? No, that's part of the print. See that orange line going through that sort of tealy color? And I can't yeah. get me. Yeah, we can see it. So what I did to to define my shapes for my, to add my quilting to each corner, was I just used the draw with points tool in my design center and created the shape without a sewing outline. But I noticed on this one down here, I really didn't want it to stitch over this printed little line. So I just used my eraser tool and erased right on top of that line. I Aww. wasn't sure how that was going to work because I've never erased into an outline before. And I didn't know if it would, you know how sometimes if you're trying to fill a shape, in my design center, if the shape is not a closed shape, it will mm -hmm. fill your whole suit. Right. I was thinking that if I did that with that shape, if I erased part of the outline, I didn't know if it would fill my whole hoop or not, and it did not. So even though I've had this machine for five years, <laughs> I'm still learning. <laughs> I love that. Somebody just mentioned, by the way, they love all the shows you did with all your Kathy's recipes. <laughs> oh, oh. 
I just used that on a, um, I made an in the hoop bag. I'm in the hoop zipper bag. I have an event this weekend that I'm going to, and I'm going to travel light. I'm hoping. <laughs> so instead of my big, huge cosmetic bag, I'm just taking the essentials like the toothbrush, toothpaste, you know, lipstick, that kind of thing. So yeah, I needed a different zipper bag for it. So I used that one pattern fill, um, the diagonal. Mm -hmm. Let me show it real quick. Do we have time? Sure. Yeah, of course we do. We're, we're so happy the internet's working. And I do have a couple questions for you real quick before you go, before the, okay. they go down too far and I miss them. Um, okay. Michelle wants to know, uh, does that require a specific model of scan and cut when you sent it from the luminaire to your scan and cut? It requires the 325 or 330 okay. SDX, 325 or 330 scan and cut models. Those are the only ones that work with the My Connection feature. And that's the, and My Connection is only available on the Luminaire or the Stellaire. Perfect. Thank you for saying that. And also, somebody earlier on here was talking about the Stellaire because they were saying they don't have that scanning mat. And someone actually answered them and said, you can take a photo using the My Design Snap app and send it over to your um, machine. All right, exactly. one more question from Terry. Terry wants to know, Kathy, are you using print mode of fabrics for the applique of the shirt and towel? If so, have you laundered the fabric and is the ink color fast? I have not laundered the fabric and I'm not positive that it will stand up to repeated launderings. So maybe that wasn't the best choice. I know that there is a iron on. Um, yeah, it's like a vinyl like or something. Vinyl yeah. stuff that you iron on that if you want to launder it a lot. And maybe I should have done that. But I know that they won't use these dish towels. These are going to be for show. So they're not going to get laundered very often. Her shirt, on the other hand, probably would as a mama shirt. So maybe... Maybe there was a reason I poked a hole in that one. <laughs> I have an idea. You tell her to let us know a year from now, next Easter, <laughs> how her mama shirt looks. And then we'll know, right? She'll be our yeah. test buddy. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Let me switch my back to the machine screen. And all then right. we'll, I'll she's show. Like, pop in your questions and stuff. Um, can you transfer with the USB stick, Beth wants to know. Oh, you mean to the scan and cut, Beth, or to the machine? Artspira, you cannot. Artspira is only from your phone to your machine. But um, leave a little bit more details there and we'll answer that. But I'm going to go to Kathy because she's on her screen now. Okay. So when I was doing the, um, the recipe of the day, during COVID lockdown at Christmas time, I think it was. It I was. Went, I went into my design center and I'm going to use a full page. I went into my pattern fills, the decorative fills. And the one that I just used was this one. It is a crosshatch pattern. And I just filled the whole screen with it. Go to next. I left it at default settings and set it to embroidery. But now I want to add from my design center again. Again, I'm going to go into my pattern fills. Grab that one again. This time we'll make it a dark blue. Say OK. And we'll fill the whole page again. This is where the change happened. For this one, I sized it down to 50%. And when I set it and go to embroidery, oh, let's go back here so I can enlarge it. You can see that it turns it into a plaid, maybe. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Can you see the plaid? Yeah, that's cool. Maybe if I change the, um, 
the red color to a different color, it might show up better. What if I change that to a green? Nope, that didn't. Yellow's not going to show either. I don't know what color is going to show good. So hopefully that will, I can't find the right buttons. We but can see it. Oh, look, now we can really see it. That looks great. So all it is is bringing in the one, and you just have to play with the different decorative fills. You can, I've done some where I've left them at the default angle, some where I've changed the second um, layer, so to speak, to a 90 degree angle. Um, I've done all different kinds of things with those. And if it wasn't already packed, I have made a sample little sampler quilt, I think with all the ones that I did in your show. Wow. But that's the decorative fills and they're fun. You can sit and play with those before you ever stitch one stitch. Those are so fun. And by the way, for those of you that maybe are new to the Brother Sews or Brother Crafts channel, you can go back and watch all those episodes. Uh, there's, uh, what are we on now, 400 something? And we didn't even start counting for the first about 100. So go back to their YouTube channel. It, YouTube's probably easier to scan than Facebook and just click on live and you can binge watch for a very long time. And all of her recipes were in there that she did, which everybody loved. Kathy, um, actually somebody, is it Michelle that said she did this before? She did this. Yeah, Michelle did. She said she did this recipe on a vinyl project for a purse. It was amazing. Great. You'll have to share it to um, Brother So's Facebook page so I can see it. Oh, yeah. Perfect, Michelle. And tag Kathy. Um, Tina wants to know. Oh, Tina, I have no idea. Will Art Spear ever be a computer software program? We can put it in the bucket wish list, <laughs> but I wouldn't know. Uh, at this point, it is not. Um, and I see one more question. There was something on Brother So's a while back because I took a clip of it that they are looking into it. So oh. they've got bug in their ear. So Tina, your bug, you bug their, your bug is in their ear. <laughs> Whatever bug that is. <laughs> All right, so Beth wants to know, can you use a USB to transfer from the scan and cut to the luminaire? Scan, no, you mean, she probably means the luminaire to the scan and cut, I'm guessing. This, the 200 series and the 300 series of scan and cuts will read a PES file. As long as it has that color that is assigned as an applique cut or applique material color stop, then the scan and cut will read that and you can bring it in from a USB. Sounds good. Tina's laughing. She's like, yes. And she says, yay. <laughs> And no more bugs, Tina. No more bugs. <laughs> uh, oh, Susie wants to know, what event are you going to? I will be in Omaha, Nebraska at a shop called Celtic Quilter. And Ooh. I'm about, um, let's see, what am I teaching? I'm teaching Quilt Birdry 101, which is a edge-to-edge embroidery class okay so you learn in the class and it's hands-on team sewing but you get to learn how to do use the edge-to-edge -edge feature of the luminaire we're going to do some sewing and we're going to use a scan and cut so we're we're having all of our tools work nicely together <laughs> all kinds of fun things anybody have any last minute questions for kathy this has been such a great show and i have to say that um the internet gremlins left. We, we for the first 10 minutes, we're trying to go live. So I'm so glad this worked out and I didn't see any glitches. So I'm so grateful for that. Kathy, this is such a great episode. I would have hated to miss it. <laughs> I had a good time. All right, let's see if any last minute, everyone just saying, love it, love it, love it. Uh, yes, someone said, where does Kathy live? Florida. Northeast Florida, where it's cold. 
I think you've got a lot of uh, Northeast Florida fans in here. Zena said she's cold in Florida too. Love it, love it. Everyone's mm -hmm. saying thank Omaha. you. Yep, come see me in Omaha this weekend. Oh, that would be fun. And you can see all of her little small packing. <laughs> Good luck on that, Kathy. Good luck. Well, you know, there's always a store in a mall if I forget something. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, by the way, if you see below, if you'd like to go to brotherssews.com, you can click on, they have two blogs, a crafting and a sewing blog. Go back and watch all of our At Your Side Virtually episodes. Go visit your brother dealer. They always have fabulous deals for you. Maybe go pop and see Kathy. That'd be fun. I think that sounds like a good road trip for the weekend. <laughs> and if you want to see the upcoming schedule for the brother live show, go to AngelaWolf.com. At the top, you click on classes and events, and I try to fill those in uh, the week prior. So maybe if, if you have a favorite person you love to see, you can also search by their name and watch the replays. So something new for this year. Kathy, this was fantastic. Any last minute things you want to share before we head off? Everybody have fun sewing. Share your creation so we can see too. Yes. And don't forget, use hashtag brother sews and hashtag brother scan and cut. I think those bunny for the silverware, that's some, my mom's hosting Easter this year. I think I should surprise her and make those and put everybody's name on it. The kids would love that. These little ones. So I'm thinking that um, I'm going to set up multiples in my hoop. Oh. And because I can color sort in my luminaire, I can just bring in one design and repeat it, fill up the hoop, color sort it. It'll stitch all of the first color, then go back and stitch the next colors. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. You still got a couple weeks, kind of, a week and a half. <laughs> all right kathy safe travels this weekend and all of you thank you for watching uh brother sewing and crafting family we love to see you and till next time happy sewing <laughs>